Merry Christmas, everybody. Today, we will recreate a reflection in a Christmas ball, and we will do that in two different ways. A very quick and easy way, and in a little bit more complicated but reusable way, where you can change the content without having to transform one more time. And on top of that, in the end, I will have a little giveaway. After all, it's Christmas. Let's start by making a copy of the layer we want to use as a reflection, Command or Control J, and then we simply select the area we want to use on the Christmas ball with the elliptical marquee tool. To make a perfectly round circle, you have to press Shift while dragging the circle, and if you press Alt or Option at the same time, your selection will be centered around your starting point. If you press the spacebar before releasing the mouse, you can move the circle to the right position, and to maintain a perfect circle, you have to release the mouse before the rest of the keys. Then we add a mask and reselect the mask by pressing Command or Control on the mask icon. Next step, go to Filter, Distort, Spherize, and go for at least 100%. We have a preview here, so we can see the degree of transformation. Well. 100% is maximum, but you can apply the filter twice if one round isn't enough. Let's undo for now. Let's move this transformed area to our Christmas ball and transform with Command T. A little to the right. We have to cover the ball completely. To cover the top of the ball, we use Liquify, Filter, Liquify, and we use Forward Warp Tool to stretch the part under the hanger. Like that. And press OK. And we have to repeat the process on the mask to see any result. Filter, Last Use Filter, and the little hanger we already have on a separate layer, we drag it to the top. Then we reselect our mask by pressing Command on the mask icon, add a curves adjustment layer, and darken a little. Let's move the Properties panel so we can see the layers, and we grab a soft round brush. Well, we better close the panel to get some estate, and dab with a black brush. We remove the darkness from the center, so the shading only affects the edges. Then another curves layer. We turn the mask to black with Command I, lift the curve, and with a small soft white brush, we can create some highlights. And again, let's close the Properties panel. I'm working on a small laptop. Last but not least, we need to adjust the colors to match the warm and cozy environment. An easy method is to use Match Color. We go to Image, Adjustments, Match Color. Under Source, we choose the image we want to match from. In this case, the image we are working on and we have to choose the layer. We use the background layer. Now our colors are much more harmonized, but maybe they are too intense. We have a few options to match even further. A little fade and a higher luminance helps in this case. Let's move the hanger to the top so it won't be affected by our adjustment layers. And let's furthermore clip our adjustment to the new image layer by Alt or Option clicking between the layers. That way we are sure that our adjustments won't exceed the Christmas ball. To add a little warmth to the image, we can use a color fill layer. I choose a light creamy yellow. We need to clip this layer too, and then multiply blending mode. I guess we need a more deep yellow orange. The last step is a little shine. Command Shift N for a new layer. And with a soft white brush, we simply make a dot. We can adjust the opacity for a more subtle effect. Well, this was the easy way. The next method needs a little preparation to be perfect and a little analyzing. Let's look at how the surroundings render in a ball with a mirror surface. It's reflecting more than 180 degrees, and the curvation near the edges is more or less following the same roundness as the ball. 
actually a bit more than we achieved with the method we used before, so if we want this to look realistic, we get better results if we use wide angle images. But before we paste any images, we will create a template we can reuse for future content. Let's create a new document. Let's choose a size of 3000 times 3000 pixels and press create. We don't need these pre-applied guidelines because we need to create our own. We can always delete them by going to view clear guides, but it's actually not necessary because when creating new guidelines with new guide layout, we can just tick clear existing guides and we get rid of our previous guidelines. In this case, we need both columns and rows, four columns and four rows and press OK. Then we grab our rectangle marquee tool set to add to selection and snap active. Now we simply select every other square. And when they are all selected, we will fill with black by pressing command backspace with black as our background color and press command H to hide the guides. Now press command J twice to make two copies of our checkered layer. The top layer we convert to a smart object and temporarily turn off the visibility by clicking on the eye icon. Then we press command H to get back to the guides and most of all this snap effect. And create a new circle with the elliptical marquee tool and make it so big it snaps to the outer edges of our canvas. Go to edit, stroke, width 30 pixels and choose a highly visible color. I choose red. Select inside and 50% opacity and deselect. Now we turn off the eye on this layer 2 and go to our background layer and make two diagonal lines and with a hard black 15 pixel brush we make a dot in the corner, press shift and another dot in the opposite corner to make a straight line. We press D and then X for a white brush and make the other diagonal line. I know it's a lot of preparation but the manipulation itself gets much easier with these helpful guides. For the next step we need a grey background color. We set our brightness to 50 and press OK. Press X to make it our background color and expand the canvas with our crop tool. We hold Alt or Option while dragging and expand until we have approximately one more row. And now we press Command T to rotate our circle layer. We rotate 55 degrees by holding Shift while rotating. We turn off the visibility for the smart object, transform with Command T and click on the warp icon and drag all four corners to align with the circle layer. Then we align the small handles with the diagonal layer and start to manipulate the circle shape while maintaining the center straight. We can dial down the opacity so it's easier to align. And we have to reposition the handles now. Easy does it. And when we are happy, we press OK. We are a little off down here. Luckily, it's a smart object and we can re-enter the transformation without having to start all over. Like that. Let's save this as a template and drag it into the Christmas ball document. We have two different bit depth. We just press yes. It's automatically clipped because our active layer had clipping masks. Let's release the clipping 
by all the option clicking between the layers. Actually, this removes all clipping masks and we have to re-clip on the adjustment layers above. Time to scale so it's slightly bigger than the Christmas ball so we don't get any weird edges. When we are happy, we can choose to clip or reuse the mask by alt dragging the mask here. And we need to use liquify on the top on this template as in our previous example. Again, forward warp tool and press OK. Now we will try to insert an image in our smart object. We can start with these Copenhagen rooftops I took with my little drone. Select a square, copy, open the smart object and paste, a little scale and close the smart object. Now we have created a template where it's easy to change the content and reuse every Christmas and we still have access to our adjustment layers to fit the new content. In this case, maybe a more deep orange. Yes. And now let's try out with another Copenhagen image. A square selection, copy, and paste into the smart object. Close and save. Well, that's it for today, but please hang on. I have a little Christmas gift. Let's see what's in the box. The first one here is the template we just created, so you can make your own Christmas cards all ready today. And the second one here, you get to decide the content of my next tutorial. You only have to write a comment below and tell me which subject in Photoshop you need me to cover. I will choose between the incoming suggestions. The last Christmas gift is mainly for my local subscribers. A one-on-one -on -one Photoshop session in my little studio. See details in the description below. Well, Merry Christmas everybody. See you in the new year.